Hello there, fellow mech warriors, and welcome to another dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. Today's topic is a straightforward light mech with an equally straightforward name. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Javelin. A fairly obscure little guy, which, nevertheless, is a solid addition to our lengthy playlist. I'm your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn some stuff about it, shall we? For a couple of stats on the thing, it is a light mech at 30 tons, with a top speed of 97.2 km an hour. The Javelin was built in 2751 by Stormvanger Assemblies as a recon mech, meant to be exported to the member states of the Star League. A compromise between speed and firepower, the Javelin was quick enough to avoid engagement with heavier mechs while still having enough firepower to dissuade pursuit. In particular, its maneuverability meant that while its main function was to make reconnaissance, it was quite adept at conducting ambushes, gaining a good reputation for popping out out of nowhere and giving rise to the phrase, sneaky as a javelin. The javelin had yet to be integrated into most SLDF regiments when the Amaris Civil War struck, and Stormvanger Assembly's factory on CAF was destroyed in 2774 unfortunately ending, for a while, all production of the Javelin. Despite that, the Federated Sons, who had purchased the largest number of the Javelins from Stormvanger assemblies, succeeded in their plan to incorporate the design into practically all their mech regiments, at the beginning of the First Succession War. It was here that its appearance took many combatants off guard. Although employed to varying degrees by the other successor states as well, the Javelin quickly became synonymous with the Federated Sons, often anchoring out scout lances, or sometimes teaming up with other Javelins to create mobile fire support lances. Following the creation of the Federated Commonwealth, the design was upgraded with a newly recovered Lost Tech in the later part of the 3040s. At the behest of the AFFC High Command, Jalastar Aerospace began production of brand new Javelins in 3055. Ever since, the sturdy and reliable scout has continued to serve with distinction on the battlefield. Although, at the time, the original's armor protection was deemed insufficient by some, new variants continue to be introduced as technology progresses, ensuring its continued service towards the end of the 31st century and beyond. It was during the bloody battle of Kentaris IV in March of 2796, that Bunk's recon lance of Reynolds' battalion, Davian's second cruise's lances, awaited the arrival of the Kuritan forces, with orders to send immediate warning of their approach. As the enemy advanced, three javelins and one wasp of Bunk's lance signaled the Davian headquarters, and then waited in covered positions. After the enemy passed them by, Bunk's lance rose up and bombarded the rear units of the Kuritan mechs destroying one Phoenix Hawk and damaging two others. Bunk's lance then jumped out of position, pursued by more than a company of the enemy. Using leapfrogging tactics, the Javelins kept up harassing fire until they were in support range of heavier friendly units. Javelins also played a major role in the famous Battle of Waterhole No. 9, during the Second Battle of Silene II in December 3002. It was during that battle that the recon lances of the Davion's 4th Deneb Light Cavalry were hidden in a moderately sized recreational lake known as Waterhole No. 9. Composed predominantly of javelins, the recon lances were put in standby mode, while they waited under 30 meters of water for the rest of the Davions to pull back from the advancing Kuritans. With their heat signatures hidden by the deep water, the Davion recon lances went undetected, until the heavy mechs of the Kuritans entered the lake to begin attacking the Davion defense line, about half a kilometer away. Suddenly, Kuritan mechs started collapsing into the water among huge explosions, as the missiles of the Javelins hit them at point-blank range. At the same time, the Davion land forces counterattacked, routing the enemy and inflicting heavy losses upon them. Shortly after this encounter, the Kuritans evacuated Silene too. Equipment-wise, the Javelin carries a fairly limited array, consisting of only two Arrow-Light SRM-6 launchers, one each in the left and right torso, with one ton of ammo per launcher. 
This makes the Javelin highly reliant upon good supply lines, and it can definitely hamper the mech if it is forced into guerrilla warfare. Although with 2 tons of ammo overall, it has enough endurance for many battles. As a close support mech, it is highly adept at swooping in and helping deliver the final blow, especially as the scattering missiles can exploit and cripple exposed systems. However, its light armor makes it ill-suited for hand-to-hand -hand brawling. Notably, the arrow lights and their ammunition stores are placed so far forward in the mech's torso that the javelin has a front-heavy center of gravity, causing mech warriors unfamiliar with the design forward lean while running to be prone to falling over while moving at a high speed in difficult terrain. With a reliable GM-180 engine, the javelin benefits from good cruising speed of 64 kph. While its 6 Rawlings 95 jump jets, 2 in each leg and the remainder in the rear center torso, provide for good maneuverability and a total jumping distance of 180 meters. 4 tons of armor allow it to survive some encounters and retreat to safety, with a half ton protecting the chest, side torsos and each leg. 10 single heatsinks mounted in the engine are sufficient cooling for this thing. A couple of notable warriors associated with this mech include Sergeant Major Rico Lee Rico Lee was a down-on-his-luck mercenary that found his way into the perpetually down-on-its-luck Wilson's Hussars when the word of Blake attacked Fletcher in preparation for the Jihad. Somehow, the mercenary survived that bloodbath, and afterward Lee was offered a billet in the 8th Sirtis Fusiliers where he and his Okie Dokie Javelin Battle Mech have served since. Once an AFFC lieutenant, Timothy Tito Bren went AWOL, with his Javelin when Operation Guerrero transformed the Sauna March into the Chaos March. For nearly 15 years, he hired himself out as a bodyguard and extra muscle for anyone who could pay. He ultimately landed in the Calderon Protectorate, where he served as a company commander in the Second Torian Pride. Now for the second part of the video, as you're used to, we have the variants. And it actually does have quite a few. The JVN-10A Introduced in 2752, the 10A is a long-range harasser. The SRM-6s are replaced by just one LRM-15 in the right torso with one ton of ammo. The JVN-10F this was the only contemporary variant with the Succession Wars, and it was also known as a Fire Javelin. It was introduced in 2019, and it is the complete opposite of the original. It removes both the SRM-6 launchers in favor of four diverse optics Type 20 medium lasers. While less reliant on expendable ammunition stores, this thing is also much more susceptible to overheating, if the lasers are used simultaneously. The JVN-10P is an upgrade of the 10N, introduced by the Federated Commonwealth among much secrecy in 3049. It does retain the armor and speed of the 10N, but removes one of the SRM-6s and replaces with two Hovertech Streak SRM-2s. While this sacrifices slightly in terms of firepower, it is far more efficient in ammo than the original. The JVN-11A was the second variant to carry the moniker of the Fire Javelin. It is an upgrade of the 10F introduced during the clan invasion in 3053 and mounts no less than 7 medium lasers, using double heatsinks to counter the massive amount of heat resulting from those weapons. The conventional armor was also swapped out for ferrofibrous, and an extra ton was added to increase the overall protection of the Javelin. This design was a field refit, often seen after other units had cast off their old parts. The JVN-11B is a scout design introduced in 3054 that replaces the SRM-6 launchers with twin SRM-4s so it can then mount a Beagle Active Probe and a Guardian ECM suite. Extra ferrofibrous armor gives it a more than 40% increase in protection, but the inclusion of case necessitated the dropping of the jump jets. An upgrade to double heatsinks also provides ample cooling. The JVN-11D This one is an upgrade of the 10F, and as such, arguably yet another Fire Javelin subtype. It carries three ER medium lasers and two medium pulse lasers, mated to an advanced targeting computer, as well as a Wunderland C3 slave unit, 
the engine was upgraded to an extra light model and the structure replaced with an endosteel internal structure. This was also the main model of the Javelin produced during the Jihad. The JVN-11F was also produced during the Jihad, introduced in 3070, and removing the weapon and equipment of the 10D to carry a snub-nosed PPC supplemented by two trios of machine guns, each one linked to a machine gun array. It is quite a low heat model which is devastating to unarmored infantry, although it is far less prevalent than the 11D. The JVN-11P was produced by the Fieldfeld Coalition. It has ferrofibrous for armor, but to prevent overheating its 10 single heatsinks, it only has 4 streak SRM-2s with 1 ton of ammo. Finally for today, a popular custom variant was the 11D Javelin Farrell. This was used by one Robert Bob Farrell, a mech warrior who worked alongside the famous Bounty Hunter. It removes the C3 slave unit of the standard 11D and replaces it with a Clantech active probe. The weapons were reworked as well, with this one mounting three ER medium lasers and two medium X-Pulse lasers, all tied into a targeting computer. Otherwise, the armor, the engine and the chassis are identical to the regular 11D. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the less flamboyant yet very solid Javelin light battle mech for today. I gotta say, this mech kinda came out of nowhere, but it managed to impress me quite a bit. I mean, for a light mech to use up to 7 medium lasers and not blow itself up is quite an achievement. I'm not certain if this was a suggestion from a subscriber since my recommendation list is very long, but if it was, thank you to that person. What about you though? Is the Javelin among your favorite battle mechs? Did you ever use it in your games? As always, I look forward to reading your opinions in the comments below. If you found the episode informative, please leave a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy and awesome day.